Let us all stand for the invocation and please remain standing for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem and Subbuhim. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with grateful hearts as we gather to witness the signing of agreements between Cebu Province and the Department of Social Welfare and Development. We thank you for the opportunity to work together towards the betterment of our communities and for the welfare of our fellow men. We pray for wisdom and discernment for all those involved in these agreements, that they may make decisions that are just and beneficial for all. May these partnerships be a source of hope and assistance for those in need, and may they lead to positive outcomes for our province. We give thanks for your constant presence and guidance in our lives, and we ask for your continued blessings as we work towards a brighter future for all. In your name we pray, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Take your seats. Maayong buntag! Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat! Welcome to the Department of Social Welfare and Development's Walang Gutom Program Information Caravan, the Oplan Pagabot Program and the Tarabasa Tutoring Program. 
This caravan, first launched in the nation's capital last year, aims to intensify the public's awareness and knowledge of DSWD's flagship programs under the leadership of President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. and Secretary Rex Gachalian. First, we would like to acknowledge the presence of our leaders and officials here with us today. We are pleased to have with us no less than the Secretary of the Department of Social Welfare and Development, Secretary Rex Gachalian. The first woman governor and the number one governor of the number one province in the entire country, Governor Gwendolyn Fial Garcia. We are also joined by the officials of DSWD Central Office, Under Secretary Eduardo Punay, Assistant Secretary Attorney Valder Brinas, Assistant Secretary Irene Dumlao. From DSWD Regional Field Office, headed by Regional Director Shalane Marie Lucero. And the rest of the DSWD officials and workers in the regions. The members of the Provincial Board, headed by Vice Governor Hilario Davide III. Board members from the 2nd District, Board Member Raymond Joseph Calderon. Board Member Dr. Stanley Caminero. From the 3rd District, Board Member Attorney John Ismael Borgonia. From the 4th District, Board Member Kerry Kian Shimura. From the 5th District, Board Member Red Duterte. Board Member Mike Villamor. From the 6th District, Board Member Glenn Anthony Soco. And Board Member Celestino Tining Martinez III. We are also joined by our partner agencies and non-government organizations from TESTA Regional Director Ramon Evan Ruiz, Provincial Director Floro Rinca, from the Juvenile Justice and Welfare Council National Office headed by their Executive Director, Attorney Trisha Claire Ojo, from the Regional Federation for Persons with Disability headed by their President, Joseph Humanto. Representatives from the National Nutrition Council, Department of Labor and Employment, and from the Academe, we have representatives from the University of San Carlos, please stand to be recognized, and the Cebu Doctors University. All the mayors and vice mayors who are present here today, led by the president of the League of Municipalities in the Philippine Cebu chapter, the Anbantayan Mayor San Shimura. Fellow workers in government, partners in the private sector, partner agencies, partner merchants, friends from media, our municipal social welfare and development offices from the province of Cebu. Again, kanatong tanan, maayong buntag. And to welcome us all in this momentous event for Cebu, let us hear it from the Vice Governor of Cebu Province the ever-supportive partner in government service and in uplifting the lives of the Cebuanos. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Governor Hilario Jujun Davide III. Governor Gwen Garcia, Secretary Rex Gachilian, Undersecretary Eduardo Punay, my colleagues at the Provincial Board, mayors, vice mayors, RD Shalane Lucero, Assistant Secretary Bringas, Assistant Secretary Dumlao, the uh, city and municipal social welfare and development officers from Cebu's different towns and uh, cities. Representatives from the academe and partner agencies. My muntag kanatong tanan. Today, this morning, we shall uh, witness the uh, signing of the memorandum of agreement 
between the province of Cebu and the Department of Social Welfare Development for the implementation of the Assistance to Individuals in Crisis Situations, or AICS, AIX program for persons with disabilities using the capital's quick response code system, the establishment of the Regional Rehabilitation Center for the Youth, and the launch of the national government's flagship initiative, the Walang Gutum Program Information Caravan. Just last March, Secretary Gachelian visited uh, Governor Gwen, and uh, during, their, during his visit, Governor Gwen thoroughly explained our approaches to poverty alleviation and the measures we took to ensure that assistance reached poor families efficiently and was used for its intended purpose. I was, uh, of course, elated to see today's event underscore the use of a QR code system for the DSWD's AX, similar to our own successful initiatives like Subo Negocio, Subusog, Dasig Subo, and other programs. It only reaffirms what we already know here, that the Cebu Provincial Government has been executing its projects effectively and efficiently. And we owe a great deal of gratitude to our Governor, Governor Gwen. Salamat kayo for her ingenuity and innovativeness in creating these programs to reduce poverty and streamline processes. These accomplishments are a testament to her benevolence, strong leadership, and profound love for the Sabanos. Again, salamat kay Gunimo, Gov. Kining AX pitaw? You know, I receive, I get AX from Mrs. Davide, but she calls it uh, aid to individuals in costly situations. She gives me a weekly baon. Muna, muna ang AX tawag niya. When we are uh, elective officials, the Ignato Kalikayan, every day, do not want to subsina, Mangayuk Ayuda. We are a Kame, Kita, a province, Manga local officials, who owed you your game, Eko Matamo, Bali Badpod. In our town, Argao, whenever there's a payout, AIC, AX, the folks there would uh, always heave a sigh of relief. Ah, X, Gikan is DSWD, Gikan in Kong. Only an I lying list, and I list as DS, and I list as Kang Kong. I heard earlier uh, you're going to, uh, the DSW is going to uh, review its uh, listing. Okay, sometimes that causes uh, a lot of confusion in the towns, especially during the distribution. <clears throat> the national government's Walangutum project, akin to the U.S. food stamp program, will, of course, provide much-needed relief to millions of Filipinos struggling to put food on the table. We all hear, we all recognize, that uh, social welfare programs are the cornerstone of any government's effort to reduce poverty. These initiatives demonstrate our unwavering commitment and determination to assisting the needy and the underprivileged who face difficult circumstances, not by choice, but because of the systemic problem of the intergenerational cycle of poverty. This morning's gathering, therefore, is not a routine ceremony. Let us seize this opportunity to demonstrate our solidarity and strong partnership with DSWD in building a society where the impoverished are no longer passive bystanders, but active participants in progress and prosperity. Let us become beacons of hope for poor Cebuanos and millions of Filipinos. Nagkang isalamat for coming here and may muta ka natong talang. Daghang salamat Vice Governor Junjun Davide.
now to introduce to us what are these the flagship programs of the Department of Social Welfare and Development. Please welcome DSWD Undersecretary Eduardo Punay. To the progressive and proactive mother of Cebu Province, Honorable Governor Gwen Garcia, ma'am. Good morning. Honorable Vice Governor Junjun Davide and the members of the Provincial Board present here this morning, all Honorable Mayors in all seven districts of the province, partner national government agencies and members of the academe, guests, ladies and gentlemen, from the DSWD family led by Secretary Rex Gachalian Maayong Buntag Cebu, uh, isang mapagkalinga at mapagmalasakit na umaga po sa ating lahat. When Secretary Rex Gachalan assumed office in January last year, the direction was clear. We're supposed to transform DSWD from an agency known uh, by many only for our ayuda into a developmental institution that capitalizes on our beneficiaries and enables them to stand on their own. In your new DSWD, we don't just provide our poor and vulnerable kababayans fish. We are now teaching, teaching them how to fish. Therefore, our new and flagship programs are targeted, conditional, measurable, digital, and sustainable. And President Bongbong Marcos directed us to employ a whole-of-government approach in the implementation of these programs, and therefore we work hand-in-hand -hand with the provincial and local governments. And it, wasn't, it was really an easy task for us because we were privileged to have a secretary that comes from your ranks in the LGU. So without further uh, ado, it's my honor to present to you the flagship programs of the DSWD under the able leadership of Secretary Rex Gachalian and the administration of President Bongbong Marcos. The Walang Gutom 2027 Food Stamps Program, Tarabasa Tutoring Program, and Pagabot Program. Let's watch this video. For the longest time, the Department of Social Welfare and Development has been synonymous with social welfare and disaster response. Oftentimes, people forget that social development is as much a component of DSWD as the other two. That is why DSWD Secretary Rex Gachalian has launched the Walang Gutum Information Caravan which aims to intensify awareness and the general public's knowledge of the department's flagship programs. Foremost among them is Walang Gutum 2027 Food Stamp Program, a priority program of President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr., it aims to address hunger and malnutrition among children by providing food augmentation to the bottom 1 million food poor households based on the Listahan 3 of DSWD. Beneficiaries are given electronic benefit transfer cards which are loaded with food credits worth 3,000 pesos every month, adopting the system that the Cebu Provincial Government implemented using QR-coded cards. They can use these cards to purchase various nutrition-rich food items from DSWD-accredited partner merchants. The program also invites beneficiaries to become productive citizens through skills training and participation in government-organized job fairs and requires attendance to the monthly nutrition education sessions as a condition for continued enrollment in the system. On the developmental dimension, DSWD also launches the Tara Basa Tutoring Program. The program engages college students who belong to low-income families and capacitates them to become tutors and youth development workers. Not only are they earning their keep through a cash-for-work scheme, but they are also helping eliminate illiteracy by conducting reading tutorial sessions to help elementary students who are either struggling or non-readers, as well as conducting sessions for parents and guardians on effective parenting. <music> Lastly, DSWD's OPLAN Pag-Abut Program extends support to vulnerable individuals, children, and families who find themselves on the streets, 
offering them options such as returning to their hometowns, relocating to areas near Metro Manila, temporary shelter in transitional facilities, or placement in long-term residential centers. For street children, the program also seeks permanent placement through foster families or adoption with the aim of steering them away from the streets where life is dire and danger lurks in every corner. DSWD dreams of seeing an empowered Filipino society where the poor, vulnerable, and disadvantaged sectors have immediate and equitable access to opportunities for an improved quality of life. Maagap at mapagkalinga, mahusay. Matapat sa DSWD, bawat buhay mahalaga. Thank you. And to give a message on behalf of the Federation for Persons with Disability in the Region, here with us today is their president, Mr. Joseph Humanto. This WD Secretary, Rix A. Gachalian, our Governor, Gwyn Garcia, Vice Governor, Hilario Davide III, mga Provincial Board Members, at to ang uh, DSWD Regional Director, Ms. Yalin Marie Lucero, tanan mga Mayors, mga City Mayors, City Mayors, and Vice Mayors, of the city and municipalities of the province of Cebu, city and municipal social welfare and development officers, akong mga officials sa regional o sa Cebu Provincial Federation of Persons with Disabilities, atong friends and media, sa tanan nga niya karon dini, maayong buntag na itong tanan. It is our gratitude to have this AX program for persons with disability in the province of uh, Cebu. So in behalf, more specifically, in behalf of the persons with disability sectors in the province and in the region seven, I would like to convey my heartfelt thanks for the inclusion of the persons with disability in this kind of program. Truly, uh, this program can uplift the economic condition of persons with disability in the province. Rest assured that our officers and our sectors will uh, support to this program by looking into the uh, beneficiaries of our persons with disabilities uh, to the disadvantage of uh, people in this province. Let us work together to make more inclusive Philippines. Thank you very much and good morning. Daghang salamat, President Joseph Humanto. Let us hear another message from the Executive Director of Juvenile Justice and Welfare Council National Office. Please welcome... Attorney Trisha Claire Oko. So, um, isa ka makabatan on o makahustisyang buntag sa atong tanan. Uh, Daghanjud salamat sa, at, sa inyong tanan for supporting ang atong mga bata, especially diri sa Cebu. Uh, the reason why I'm here is because um, in uh, the DSWD and of course together with JJWC in partnership with the province of Cebu, is go, uh, we are going to establish the Regional Rehabilitation Center for Girls. This is the first ever RRCY in the Philippines that's for girls. And it's going to be established first in Cebu. Uh, many thanks, of course to uh, Governor Gwen Garcia, who really continued this project 
uh, from way before. Thank you very much, uh, ma'am, for your support. Of course, to uh, also thank you to Vice Mayor, uh, Vice Governor Hilario Davide, and of course to my boss, Secretary Rex Gachalian. Um, uh, without which this won't be possible. Uh, by the way, uh, the Juvenile Justice and Welfare Council is not a non-government agency. It's an attached agency of the um, uh, of the DSWD. So government po kami. Um, I would also like to mention pala si Ardisha Lucero. Si Ardisha Lucero, I will call her the OG of <laughs> because she was the one who uh, proposed this idea and said perhaps you can propose this to the, our decision makers, our head, si Governor Garcia and si uh, Sec Rex and they said yes. So Kayo po, uh, this is really the first ever in the Philippines. So thank you very much. We are grateful for the proud provincial government of Cebu for partnering, partnering with us to build an institution for children in conflict with the law, especially for girls. And of course, through the leadership of our uh, Cebu uh, province governor, um, who allowed us to do this here. Um, daghang nangutana sa ako, unsa ba'y kalainan sa BPA o sa RRCY? What is the difference between the BPA and RRCY? This is actually a very common question. And um, um, I will give you a, uh, an analogy. Um, it's not the exact analogy, but it's the best way to understand this. Uh, ang nakabutang man sa atong balaod, what's uh, given in our law, we cannot place children in jail if uh, they have pending sentences or when they are already uh, when they are already found guilty of the crime that they did. So ang bahay pag-asa, if you need to deprive the liberty of the child and the case is still pending, you put that child in the bahay pag-asa. So it's the same way with the adults when you uh, need to detain them, ibutang ni muna sila sa BJMP. So that's the equivalent of bahay pag-asa. And for uh, if they are already found guilty, ang mga kabataan, they will go to the RRCY. But, and uh, for adults naman, they go to Bucor. But the difference is if they are in bahay pag-asa or, or in RRCY, although they are deprived of their liberty, ang um, focus sa programa ay ang ilahang rehabilitation. And when they go to RRCY, they don't serve the sentence. Uh, te uh, technically, they do, but the focus is to rehabilitate them because if they get rehabilitated, the case is dismissed. But if they don't get rehabilitated until the age of 21, then they have to serve their time in jail for the remaining part of the uh, detention. So, Kana siya ang difference. So it's like the uh, equivalent of uh, not exactly, but the Bucor and the, Bahai, uh, and the uh, BJMP. So also, um, I would also like the, to thank, of course, my secretary um, my, through, the, through his leadership because um, uh, he, he, uh, he made this possible, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, by the way, um, if you talk about child rights advocacy, He's already gone a long way. This is not the first time that he's doing it because even when he was the mayor and the congressman in his district and also his locality, he's doing this. So um, this is a good example and I'm also urging everyone to, lalo na po sa ating mga local uh, officials, to really continue what you're doing because I know all of us here are child rights advocate. You are the decision makers and it's really very important to continue um, advocating for children's rights. And I would like to connect this to the program of Walang Gutom and Tarabasa because these programs, if you really look deeper into it, tanan yun na beneficiary diri, uh, a daghan good ang mga kabatan o na to na makakuha good og benefits diri. And it's also part of the preventive measures for juvenile delinquency because if you give them their basic needs, if you provide, if you help their family provide for their basic needs, if you uh, put emphasis on education, you will not find them in the streets looking for food and being at risk of coming into conflict with the law. So um, I would leave the, this, uh, uh, my message is um, almost half of our population in the Philippines are children, but they are, they are all of our future. So. Um, uh, we are, I think we are on the right track in investing, uh, in investing on them and also uh, on the citizens and the province of Cebu when we, uh, when we do that uh, Walang Gutong program, the Tarabasa, and also 
the RRCY. So through our joint efforts, we can shape a bagong Pilipinas where every child may, uh, has a chance to change their future for the better. Dahil sa bagong Pilipinas, bawat bata may pag-asa sa juvenile justice law. Please support it. Bawat bata may pagkakataong magbago. Daghang salamat sa ating inyong kanal. Daghang salamat, Attorney Trisha Claire Oko. The Constitution provides that no money shall be paid out of the Treasury except in pursuance of an appropriation made by law. It is therefore the policy of the state to ensure that all resources of the government shall be managed and utilized in accordance with the law and safeguarded against loss or wastage through illegal or improper disposition to ensure that public funds are spent prudently and wisely. The responsibility to ensure that such policy is discharged rests directly with our officials or the head of a government agency concerned. That is why in Cebu, Governor Gwendolyn Garcia has been pulling out all stops to ensure that capital funds are spent only for their legally intended objectives, down to the last centavo. This is highlighted through the capital's innovative Subu Negosyo, a program that helps Cebuano micro-entrepreneurs to start up a business or grow their existing ventures. First launched in September 2020, at the height of the pandemic, Governor Garcia allocates 100 million pesos annually to be used as seed capital for qualified beneficiaries screened by the offices of the 17 board members and the office of Vice Governor Hilario Davide III. But instead of disbursing the amount in cash, the capital makes use of QR-coded cards which beneficiaries use in buying the already pre-approved items needed for their businesses from capital's partner merchants. This way, capital funds are spent solely for their intended purpose as the QR cards will not accept items that are not related to their chosen business. And just like hitting two birds with one hit, Capital funds given to the MSMEs are injected back into Cebu's economy, especially in the countryside, where partner merchants are already identified. This system was also firmly established through Dasig Subu program, where the capital disbursed 1.8 billion pesos in assistance to over 400,000 households from at least 35 local government units in the province when Cebu suffered the brunt of devastation brought about by Super Typhoon Odette in December 2021. Each family beneficiary were given QR-coded cards in redeeming pre-approved items they needed to repair their destroyed homes, such as housing materials and groceries from the capital's partner merchants. Technological advancements, if harnessed properly, can make for efficiency and effectivity in governance and public service. That is why, Social Welfare and Development Secretary Rex Gachalian, during a visit at the Capitol in March this year, immediately understood the potentials of QR cards if integrated in the vast operations of the department. Today, we will witness a landmark cooperative agreement between the province of Cebu headed by Governor Gwendolyn Garcia and the Department of Social Welfare and Development, headed by Secretary Rex Gachalian for the distribution of the Department's assistance to individuals and families in crisis situation or AIX program. To the poor persons with disabilities in Cebu Province, identified under the Listahan 3 of DSWD. Under the agreement, DSWD shall transfer into the province of Cebu a total amount of 40.1 million pesos which shall be distributed to over 11,000 poor Cebuanos with disabilities 
through a one-time assistance worth 3,500 pesos each. To ensure that the financial assistance will be spent purely for the intended purpose, DSWD has agreed to adopt the QR-coded card system of the province for the release of the assistance to the beneficiaries. Like in other programs, these QR cards to be distributed by the capital to the listahan three beneficiaries shall be used in purchasing basic needs and commodities from the capital's partner stores. As a sign of goodwill, Cebu Province also embarks in another collaboration with DSWD, with Governor Garcia and Secretary Gachalian signing a deed of use of rock repurposing the capital-owned Bahay Pag-asa building in Barangay Inayagan, City of Naga, into the Regional Rehabilitation Center for Youth, or RRCY, exclusively for female children in conflict with the law, or CICL. Under the deed of usufruct, which will be signed in the presence of Attorney Trisha Claire Oko, Executive Director of the Juvenile Justice Welfare Council, DSWD shall operate the two-story facility that sits on a 2,000-square-meter capital property for a period of 10 years or until 2034. The facility, built during the incumbency of former Governor and now Vice Governor Hilario Davide III, will finally serve its purpose, which is to be a safe place of rehabilitation for young girls in conflict with the law. Pursuant to Republic Act No. 9344 or the Juvenile Justice and Welfare Act of 2006, these young girls shall be taken care of at the RRCY for Girls where they will be looked after by DSWD through their competent social workers given basic education or taught technical and vocational skills in anticipation of their reintegration as productive members of society. In all these undertakings, the Cebu Provincial Board has been very supportive by providing Governor Gwen with the proper authorization to enter into agreements with DSWD for the adoption of the QR-coded system in distributing IKES to Cebuano beneficiaries and in the deed of use of RUCT for the Bahay Pag-asa and City of Naga, as well as the favorable endorsement of the agency's Walang Gutom 2027 program. The welfare and development of the people is never the work of one agency of the government. It requires the collective effort of all agencies, in partnership with the private sector, in order to achieve desired results for the benefit of the people. That is why, the Cebu Provincial Government will always be a happy and willing collaborator of the Department of Social Welfare and Development, whose noble mandate is what constitutes the essence and the heart of true public service. We will now proceed to the signing. First, of the Yusufruct Agreement for the Establishment of the Regional Rehabilitation Center for the Youth. May we request Secretary Gachalian and Governor Gwen Garcia to please go on stage. This document, which will be signed by Governor Gwen Garcia representing the province of Cebu and Secretary Rex Gachalian representing the Department of Social Welfare and Development, is a deed of Yusufruct which will allow the department to use a province-owned property, the Bahay Pag-asa building located in Barangay Inayagan, City of Naga, and turn it into a regional rehabilitation center for youth exclusively for female children in conflict with the law for a period of 10 years. This will be witnessed by Attorney Trisha Claire Oko, the Executive Director of the Juvenile Justice and Welfare Council, Vice Governor Hilario Davide III, DSWD Regional Director Shalane Marie Lucero, and Officer in Charge of the Provincial Social Welfare and Development Office, Dr. Mary Rose Vincoy. We would also like to request the witnesses to please go on stage for the photo opportunity.
Thank you. Next is the signing of a cooperative agreement which will be signed by Governor Garcia and DSWD Field Office Regional Director Shalane Marie Lucero and will be witnessed by Secretary Rex Gachalian for the implementation of assistance to individuals and families in crisis situation or AX to the poor persons with disabilities in Cebu province. Under the agreement, DSWD will turn over the amount of 40.1 million pesos for the program which will be distributed to PWDs identified by the department using Capital's innovative QR code system. Photo Opportunity Thank you. And now the department will turn over a check to Governor Gwen Garcia, the amount of 40.1 million pesos for the implementation of the AX Plus program. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. The secretary is giving a ceremonial check to Governor Gwen Garcia, the amount of 40.1 million pesos. We would also like to request the board members to please join the secretary and the governor and our regional director on stage for a photo opportunity. Thank you. And now we will proceed to the ceremonial signing of the Pledge of Commitment. First, DSWD Regional Director Shalane Lucero will have an announcement. Thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of the Department of Social Welfare and Development, we would like to share that of the mayors who attended in today's uh, turnover and information caravan, we are happy to say that there are 42 who pledge uh, their interest to support the Walang Gutum. There are 38 who pledge their interest to support the Tarabasa and another 42 who pledge their interest on the Uplan Pagabot. Daghang kayong salamat mga mayors. Dagang salamat. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. All the mayors, vice mayors, and local social welfare and development officers have signed the Pledge of Commitment supporting DSWD's flagship programs. And this time, the rest of the officials of the province of Cebu will sign a commitment on stage supporting the department's flagship programs led by Governor Garcia, Vice Governor Davide, and the members of the provincial board. The mayors present will be represented by LMP Cebu Chapter President San Shimura, TESDA, the National Nutrition Council, DOLE, the members of the Academe, and their local social welfare and development officers present, represented by the Provincial Social Welfare and Development Officer. Again, this is a commitment of support to the department Walang Gutom Pag-abot Program and Tarabasa Tutoring Program.
Dagang salamat and you may now take your seats. The Department of Social Welfare and Development logo shows a pair of hands protectively holding a heart. While the heart easily represents the poor and disadvantaged members of the society, the pair of hands symbolizes the joint responsibility of government and the private sector in alleviating poverty and uplifting lives. That is why President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has made the perfect pick when he chose Congressman Rex Gachalian of Valenzuela City's 1st Legislative District to lead DSWD. Secretary Gachalian, the brother of Senator Sherwin Gachalian, comes from the private sector, who has had an impressive resume as an executive in one of the country's most distinguished hotel chains. Upon his foray into public service, he represented the 1st District of Valenzuela City at the House of Representatives from 2007 to 2013. He was elected Mayor of Valenzuela in 2013, a post that he would hold for three terms or until 2022. Under his leadership, he made Valenzuela City not only a business-friendly city, but a livable city that is disaster-resilient as well. This wealth of experience, accumulated through meaningful years in the private sector, as well as in local governance and legislative branch of the government, has well equipped Secretary Gachalian to take on the daunting task of leading the department that is primarily mandated to develop, implement, and coordinate social protection and poverty reduction solutions for and with the poor. He has strengthened the country's capacity to respond swiftly to the most pressing needs in times of crisis by aggressively pursuing superior supply management logistics facilities, making DSWD omnipresent when disaster strikes, and acquiring a modern disaster response command center that allows for a centralized and efficient operations anywhere in the country. While maintaining the social welfare component of DSWD, Secretary Gachalian also moves to strengthen the agency's development side to ensure that the poor, vulnerable, and disadvantaged sectors will eventually be able to stand on their own. But beyond policies and programs, Secretary Gachalian embodies a rare blend of deep empathy and tireless advocacy for the marginalized. He believes in the inherent dignity of every Filipino, recognizing their unique value and potential in contributing to nation-building. Today, the Cebu Provincial Government is proud to welcome a true servant of the people, the Secretary of the Department of Social Welfare and Development, Secretary Rex Gachalian. Ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary of the Department of Social Welfare and Development, Secretary Rex Gachalian. Good morning, good morning. Um, uh, it's a day of uh, saying thank you for the department. Uh, first of all, Gov Gwen, uh, Vice Governor June, to the board members, to the uh, municipal and city mayors, to the uh, respective uh, social welfare and development officers and to all the stakeholders. Thank you for the warm reception to the uh, DSWD family. Gov, thank you for the entire arrangement. We, uh, I was telling you, Sek Bunay, we're so used to ragtag arrangements that this is a, uh, uh, we got shocked nung ganito in arrangement, Gov. Truly, thank you for the warm welcome. Thank you for arranging all of this. Maraming salamat, Gov. Um, second, uh, Gov, more than the arrangements, thank you for bringing all the stakeholders together. Uh, my boss, the president, as you mentioned, Karina, comes from the ranks of the local government units. 
every time my program in the department or there's an issue that we have to resolve, he always refers back to our experiences as local chief executives. Him serving as governor of Ilocos and me serving as city mayor. Ang favorite line niya lagi sa akin, Rex, talk to the mayors, talk to the governors. They know what to do. Sabi niya, alam mo na yan because you were in their shoes before. And um, we're very thankful for this uh, uh, gathering of mayors and local chief executives because it gives us a chance to be able to explain and to listen. I was telling si Gov Gwen kanina, I know the feeling exactly of national government shoving things down your throat, literally shoving it. They'll issue a memo, gawin mo. I, um, uh, when I joined the department, Gov, I was telling the, uh, alam to ni R.D. Shalane and everybody, I said, when I was mayor, I had the horrible experience of working with DSWD and I hated DSWD nung mayor ako. Alam nila yan, I told them that and I, told, I qualified it. I said, it's not that I don't like the people, it's just that I don't like how you guys cascaded programs before. Na it's a one-size-fits-all. They'll issue a memo and they would expect that a highly urbanized city, a municipal, uh, municipality, a GIDA area will all sing the same song. It doesn't work that way. Kaya nga, the second thank you is thank you to the local chief executives who gave us their inputs kanina. We truly appreciate all of those and we will take it to heart as we scale up our programs. Thank you because uh, you gave us a glimpse of the flavors of your different terrains. We know that there's no one size that will fit all. And clearly, the president instructed us that all programs should always tailor fit to the needs of the locality and the local chief executives, your governor, and the mayors know that. And again, thank you because, Gov, um, when I visited you in your office, little did you know that we were copying and picking your mind again and again. Kaya nga kanina, I was telling the mayors when we were talking about the Walang Gutom program that it's not very hard for me to explain because you were ahead of your time. You were already doing it. You have your own uh, QR code system that is dispensing social welfare in a very efficient, fast manner na walang system loss. That I gathered from Gov. Kaya nga, we kept on picking nuances from her various programs. Yung uh, Sugbo Busog, uh, Sugbo uh, um, uh, Negosyo, and uh, Sugbo Marketplace. Um, the governor explained to us the ecosystem of making sure that yes, we give to the beneficiaries, but the byproduct should also benefit the local industry. Kaya kanina when uh, Mayor Julie and the other mayors were talking about, uh, Mayor Allegrado was talking about it, um, we value the input of making sure that our farmers, our small co-ops, our small retailers also get to benefit from the overall scheme of social welfare. Because after all, our farmers are also poor, marginalized, and vulnerable. And we are thankful, uh, Gov, because that uh, two-hour session we had in your office was actually a tutorial for us. Kaya nga, napakadali ho i-explain kasi na ginagawa nyo na ho. And that's why I said uh, uh, this uh, message is about us in the department thanking all of you. And uh, more importantly today, we are thanking you also for the renewed partnership in using your existing technology for social protection. Your uh, QR code system, I haven't seen in a lot of, I've never seen actually, in LGUs kasi they always think that social welfare is mano-mano all the time, manual. They always talk about digitalization but they never put DSWD, social welfare, in the same sentence of technology. But clearly, the model that you have running right now in Cebu, led by your governor or inceptualized and managed by your governor, is a working template that we can start using for other provinces that will ask for AICs from us. Kanina was telling si Gov, Gov, a lot of, uh, unfortunately, a lot of public officials kasi they think AICs and then they do it manually. So it's tedious, it's manual, it's prone to system loss. But now, if with the new partnership that we have, we can show them that if Cebu can do it, they can do it. And very simple, I'll just tell them, go to Cebu and copy it. And I'm sure Sigov will be more than generous to use the Cebuano template in, sabi ko nga, the Cebuano template in technology for social protection. We're hitting the most vulnerable, the PWDs, the poorest PWDs, but ensuring that they do it in a dignified manner. No more lines, no more... Uh, falling in line, going to a basketball court, wala nang ganon. 
And two, making sure that the, the purpose of that social welfare is actually used for that purpose. So, Gov, thank you, because uh, this is a pioneering idea that we will copy, replicate, and push other LGUs, whether barangay, uh, whether uh, province, to just copy the Cebuano model. And last, I know Gov has, uh, she told me she's going to mention it, thank you for lending us the property that will house the future uh, RRCY for girls, the first in the country that will be for purely exclusively for girls. You know, uh, I will leave it to Gov to explain to us the history of the, prov of the property, but Samen, um, I've already instructed our executive director for our attached agency, JJWC, to make sure that next week you bring me the costings because Silagov has done their part. They have already lent us the property. Now it's up to us to furnish it and operate it. We are not in the business of taking on donations only to leave it the way it is. So Gov, you have our commitment that in the coming budget year, we'll see to it that it's already there so that it's put to good use. That you, the, donate, that the use of rack that you have given won't just end up in a piece of paper without it being executed. You have our word on that. In closing, my boss, like I said, the president, has always said that sa bagong Pilipinas, walang gutom. Sa bagong Pilipinas, dapat wala nang naghihirap. Pero if I can add to that, the takeaway that I bring home today is sa bagong Pilipinas, ang national government nakikinig sa local government units. That is something that I think is not said often, but he always instructs us na ang programa ng Pamalang National, programs of the national government, shouldn't be crafted by bureaucrats in the central office and pretend that it's a one-size-fits-all for everything. But in Sabagong Pilipinas, we, there is a strong sense of partnership between the local government and the national government, but it's always the local government's voice that takes precedence because you know your localities, you know your constituents, and you know the terrain very well. I was once a mayor, and I will always say this again and again. I understand what you are trying to do for your localities, and I know that by using and utilizing your existing framework, like what we're doing with AX+, then it will be easier for us in the national government to get the job done. We use, we leverage your capacities, your logistics, your know-how to get the mission of the president of eradicating poverty, extending social protection in the fastest manner possible. So with that said, again, let me take this opportunity in behalf of the entire DSWD family, Gov Gwen, maraming maraming salamat po, uh, Vice Gov, and to the entire provincial board, thank you for the generosity, and to all the mayors, we look forward to working with you. Maraming salamat. Dagang salamat, Secretary Rex, and we would like to request the good secretary to please stay on stage to receive these tokens from the province of Cebu. And may we request Vice Governor Davide and the members of the Provincial Board to please join the Governor. This is a miniature replica of the historic Capitol Building, one of the oldest buildings in the Philippines, built during the American period and was declared a National Historical Landmark by the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. A gift from the people of Cebu. Next, the Puso Lam. In appreciation of the Secretary's steadfast belief in and support for Cebu, serving as a guiding light and inspiration that has helped uplift the lives of the Cebuanos, especially the marginalized sector. And the Secretary's portrait, lasered on wood. We were told that this is the Secretary's favorite photo. Thank you so much again. Let's give a hand to our Secretary Rex Gachalian. You may now take your seats.
first woman governor in its 454-year history. The only governor who, after serving three consecutive terms, came back for a historic fourth term and now serving her unprecedented fifth term in office. The only public official who breached the one million mark in Cebu's electoral history, garnering 1.4 million votes in the 2022 elections, beating her opponent by 1.1 million. The first governor to receive the Laurel of Excellence Award as an outstanding public servant for consistently ranking number one among 82 governors in the entire country. Cebu's Iron Lady and the most beloved governor of the people. Governor Gwendolyn Fiel Garcia. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. The perfect person to lead the Department of Social Welfare and Development. Really, he has done major changes in the department that we also used to hate. We are so glad that he is with us here today in this historic launching of the QR-coded assistance for PWDs and other agreements. Secretary Rex Lon Gatchal Young. Vice Governor, assistance to, to, to individuals in costly situation. They're very supportive. Vice Governor of the Province of Cebu, Vice Governor Hilario Davide III. <laughs> Our provincial board members of the seven legislative districts in the Province of Cebu, the youngest under secretary, I am told, by Secretary Rex. <laughs> I thought you were representing the SK. <laughs> Under Secretary Eduardo Punay, the, uh, and the rest of the Department of Social Welfare Family. Of course, may I make a special mention of our regional director, previously hated, now loved. <laughs> I.D. Shalane Lucero. and the other DSWD officials from the central and regional offices. May I ask our mayors per district, together with the vice mayors to stand. The mayors of the first district, please, to stand up and be recognized together with the vice mayors. Thank you. The mayors of the second district and the vice mayors of the second district. The mayors of the third district and the vice mayors of the th third district of Cebu. Our mayors of the fourth district and vice mayors. The mayors of the fifth district and vice mayors. By the way, my skirt was given by the mayor of So Good. <clears throat> Thank you. Pakpak mo ilgin, ganahan mo sa akong sayal. The mayors of the sixth district 
and the vice mayors, the mayors of the seventh district, fresh from their South Africa safari tour, and the vice mayors. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presence this morning. Attorney Tricia Clare Oko, one of the happiest persons <laughs> in the room today, our city and municipal social welfare and development officers, <laughs> Mr. Joseph Humanto, the president of the Regional Federation of Persons with Disability, and the other officers of the RFPD. Members of the Academe, our partner agencies, partner merchants, members of media, Daghan Ligimurun, mga binate o minahal kong kaigsunang sugbuanon, mayong udto ka natong tanan. I've said it before, I'd like to say it once again. God really puts together the right persons at the right time for the right reasons. Let me start with the Juvenile Delinquent Center. This was built during the administration of Vice Governor, then Governor, Junjun Davide. When I took over in 2019, I believe the building needed just a little more finishing, but I was concerned about how to operate it and the expenses that the operations would entail, not to mention the identification of the juvenile delinquents that would be rehabilitated in that center. Then COVID struck, then Typhoon Odette struck, and for a while there, as you saw, Secretary, the grass started to grow and memory started to slowly fade away. But the dream of the Juvenile Delinquency Agency refused to die. And the regional director, who was privy to the various meetings that we have had as regards the operation of this facility, with a new secretary, mindful of the role of DSWD, not just in handing out assistance, but in developing those that needed help, broached the idea of the possibility that this time the Department of Social Welfare, one thing that I had always been requesting, would be the one to operate the center itself. It had to take the perfect person as DSWD secretary to make all of our wishes come true. Daghan ka ayong salamat, Secretary Rex Gachalian. And now, yes, that is true. We have had mayors in several meetings of ours the person who was called out the most and who had to do a lot of explanation always, always, always would be R.D. Shalane Lucero. One after another, especially when ayudas were being distributed with lists that did not emanate from the mayors, but they themselves would be the brunt of all complaints as regards the choices of the individuals that were to receive the ayuda. But credit to her, Secretary Rex, no matter how difficult the grilling, sometimes they were, she was already being given the third degree, the grilling and the drilling, she always kept her poise. Tinoo <laughs> dili. So much so that we would say, 
No matter what we'll do, she will always give us the cool, calm, and collected answer. This is the policy of the Department of Social Welfare and Development. I understand, Mayor, how you are feeling, but you see, Central Office has so decreed that it shall be this way. Did I copy it right? Sakto? Why? Because, yes, we felt that certain programs were just being shoved down our throat. We could not even chew it. We had to immediately swallow. And uh, <clears throat> as my reputation has already been set during COVID, especially when the IATF would show down our throats, sometimes too illogical and burdensome to our people policies, we would refuse to swallow. And we were known as the hard-headed Cebuanos. In fact, Secretary, many members of the provincial board here belong to that historic, unique provincial board then which was the only provincial board which summoned <laughs> the IATF to appear right here in the social hall. I will no longer mention names, but you know who they are. They, were, they came to answer questions from the provincial board. That's how hard-headed, historically hard-headed, the Cebuanos are. But, as you yourself said, it all starts with local government. It is the mayors, the barangay captains, and on to the governors who know what the situation actually is and whether or not certain programs may be implemented without confusion, without bias, and whether or not some programs just cannot be. And so consultation with our mayors would certainly come up with policies that are agreed upon and are workable and effective. We are just so glad that you have spent, is it three terms or six ter or as mayor, as mayor, nine years as the multi-awarded mayor of Valenzuela, that you understand how important local governments are in the implementation of national policies and programs. And so, again, the right person has been brought at the right time for the right reasons. That is why we are here right now, with no longer any hate or rancor for the DSWD. And we feel honored that Secretary Rex has chosen to adopt the QR coded system that we have been using from the very beginning with Subo Negocio then to Typhoon Udet with Dasig Subo, and now even with our distribution of um, financial assistance to persons that are affected by fires, various fires that hit the different municipalities and cities, we now also give out QR-coded cards so that the funds purpose will really be fulfilled, that this will be used for the buying of during Odette, building materials, the purchase of food for the family, and not for hair rebanding. <laughs> Se <laughs> Secretary Rex could not forget that. So this is how we really should be able to accomplish much 
local governments working hand in hand with the national government. Last week, the president himself was here. And being fully aware of his policy as well, to always consult the governors, the mayors, as regards plans, programs, projects intended by the national government, and being fully aware of the present geopolitical situation of the country. We saw it fit to declare in no uncertain terms. Because over here in Cebu, as you can see, we are all united. From the Cebu provincial government, with our vice governor and the provincial board members, to our city and municipal mayors, vice mayors, councillors, to our barangay captains, barangay kagawads, and to our SK chairman, and SK Kagawads, we all move as one, one united Cebu. And this one united Cebu stands firmly in support of the candidate then who called for unity for the entire country and the president now whom we had fully supported because his principles of unity were perfect and were synonymous with our own goals. I believe there is no voice of contradiction in the social hall when I say that this one united, undivided, and indivisible Cebu stands firmly behind President Bongbong Marcos. <laughs> Louder, please, for the country to hear. Nagbantay ra ba ko kung kinsay kusog ni Pakpak o hinay ra? So one more time. Wa lagi ka ni Pakpak, kanang nag-itom diha sa likod ay... Ikaw ba, wa, kanang naas likod, wa lagi ka ni Pakpak. Kanang naas likod ni kuan ay ni Vice Mayor Kihano. Pakpak daw, patanawa ko sa imong kamot. Ikaw ba? Pakpak daw eh. Pakpak lagi. <laughs> ikaw lagi. Oh, ikaw, wala yung guwapo diha. <laughs> Akana ba? And, because, indeed, we have the perfect, the perfect choice of the president for DSWD secretary. May I now announce <clears throat> that you have seen the programs, you have seen the aim of empowering the individual in the same way, during the Ayuda times, I said, no, no, let us not, let us not encourage a culture of mendicancy. We help the Cebuanos help themselves. Give them the skills. Give them the wherewithals in order that they themselves will rise from the abject poverty that they are in now, so that the dignity of the Cebuano will shine forth. In support of the programs of Secretary Rex Gachalian, for all of our mayors, the province of Cebu will assist in the amount of 2 million pesos per municipality and city <laughs> for the mayors and another 1 million pesos for the vice mayors or a total of 3 million pesos that must be spent on infrastructure 
that will be the center for the promotion of the programs of the DSWD. That should be good news for our city and municipal social welfare and development officers. Again, Secretary, a first. In this number one province of Cebu, there will now be a social welfare and development center in every city and in every town in the entire province of Cebu. National government, local government, working hand in hand for our beloved country. This is one Cebu for one Philippines. Daghang salamat. Daghang salamat, Governor Gwen Garcia. Ladies and gentlemen, that now ends our program today. Lunch will now be served, but please watch our press conference together with the Secretary and Governor Gwen, which will follow after this. Dagang salamat o maayong otto kanatong tanas. Please enjoy your lunch.